Hello, welcome back. DJ Vic Vapor with you, Logic Pro 10. And we're continuing on in our tutorials about markers. Editing markers was the previous one. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about navigating markers. So you can see here I've got a little real basic just drummer kind of thing going on. It's all the same stuff. I just wanted to give you the idea of a, a layout here. I've got intro, verse, hook, and bridge. So let's say we want to navigate. Um, we'll just play a little bit and then we want to navigate through the project to individual markers. So what I'm going to do is start playback. So we've got some playback going. And let's say I want to jump over to a, a different marker, say the hook, the next one over. You, what you want to do is you want to hold down Option and Period to go forward and it'll go to the next marker and then comma option and comma is rewind so I don't know if you're aware of this but the option button and then if you select period or comma it's like a fast forward and rewind in logic so option period fast forward option comma rewind and if you just do period by itself it jumps forward each individual bar, not using option, just period. And then comma rewinds each each individual bar. So period and comma, fast forward and rewind. So the option is what's making it jump to each new marker. So let's see. Um, you can also, you can take a marker. Let's say we'll go to hook, grab it drag it up here and drop it, now it becomes part of our um, cycle. And then we can navigate the cycles the same way by holding down option, period, or comma to move them forward and backward. And then you'll find the playhead matching that. See how the playhead follows the uh, selection above. So another way to navigate through. And let's see here. You can actually... Another advanced way to navigate. If you want to go, say I'm over here and the project's quite lengthy. And I want to go, say, to the hook specifically. Another quick way to do that is option forward slash and then you've got this little menu here. Type in the number of the marker. So let me go back just a second there. So each marker as they're created internally has a number. So one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth throughout your project. How many markers you may have set up. So let's say I want to go to marker three which is the hook. I want to do option forward slash I'll type in the number hit OK and that's right where it goes let's try that again option forward slash let's say one enter there it goes so just another way to jump through and micromanage and, and navigate through the markers Also, what we can do as far as um, understanding the importance of markers is you can actually, the, the benefit you have for the marker here is you can, I have these set up in this particular project, but what you can do is if you highlight over here, you see the marker uh, give you options for a drop down, and we could do marker sets. So we can currently, this one's untitled, I can name it, um, let's say original. And if I wanted to create another set of markers that I wanted to maybe edit in a different way just for comparison, I can go back, create 
you can create a new, which if I click new right now, it'll actually delete all the information we have as far as markers right there. And I don't really want to do that because I don't want to create them all over again. So I'm just going to say duplicate set. And then we can title that. We'll say um, original number two. So now I can go in and edit these any way I see fit. And have an alternate version of an idea maybe for the layout of the song or just whatever whatever need you might have for editing so now I've got this version and if I want to go back to the other one I simply just go back marker sets original set and boom we've got the original set back so you might be asking yourself you know during the course of uh, the last two or three tutorials what's the real advantage or what's the importance of markers the more um, you get into production, the more organized you become, obviously, it's an easy way to navigate your song. But you can actually, this information can stay with the bounced file. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to do Command A, select everything, and then Command B to bounce. It'll bring up this screen. It's just giving me a general idea here, which everything looks good. I'm going to hit OK. And uh, I'm going to leave it as YouTube tutorial to the desktop. And let's go YouTube tutorial number two. And hit bounce. Bounce this real quick here. Okay. So now I'm going to go file. We're going to create a new project. We don't want to close this one. So don't close. There's our new project. We'll leave it as audio, create. And then I can simply drag in the file that we just bounced and watch it, how it saves the information. Uh, let me get rid of this one here. It's going to be in my way. All right. So now this is the file we... Oh, that's, let me find number two. This is the file we just bounced out. YouTube tutorial number two. We'll bring it back in. It's going to ask, do you want to import into this project the uh, tempo information? Yes. And here it says the added audio file contains markers. Yes, we want those also. So now we've got our markers up here. Let me zoom out a little bit. There's our markers. So we can continue to navigate this file by using the uh, option period through our verse, hook, bridge, and option comma to go back and forth. So that information's, and then again, if you had, say you had, you know, notes embedded or anything like that, all that information is going to come over with you. So maybe uh, you put some notes in there on how you want to EQ things or how you want to master things out. All that information is going to stay there with it. So that is the benefit of markers. Hopefully in the last couple tutorials or two or three tutorials, you've begin to understand and, uh, find some use uh, in setting setting up and using markers. Um, join us in the next tutorial. Thanks.